Candlepin New Generation encourages kids to be active and enjoy Candlepin Bowling. Candlepin New Generation is made possible by Academy Lanes, New England's largest Candlepin Center. Visit academylanes.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. Candlepin New Generation 12 to 14 semifinal showdown. Alongside Brian Rowe, I'm Rob Taylor at Woburn Bulldrome. We've got another match featuring a ton of talented youngsters ready to go for you. Two of them are to my left. We'll start with them. Trevor, you bowled a couple of weeks ago or an hour ago. Uh, how do you feel that helps you? Do you feel like you feel in more of a rhythm now? Yeah, definitely. Um, last time you picked up an incredibly clutch 10 pin at the end. How do you try to carry that momentum into this match? I'm going to try keeping it straight and focus on the pins. Got it. Sammy, you're back. You're in your home house. Now that the, have the nerves settled down any since the last match, how are you feeling? Yeah, I think I'm um, more ready this time. Any big takeaways from the last match that you're going to try to apply in this one? Definitely hitting single pins. It's the hardest thing in candlepin bowling. We'll see if you guys are able to do it. Best of luck. Brian, you're with a couple of veterans. I am. I got Nate and Jenna here. Nate, we'll start with you. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling today and how you been bowling lately? Awesome. Awesome to both? Yes. Uh, now, were you able to scout the, the first match? Did you watch them bowl, though, when they won? Yes. And what did you get from it, and what do you think? <sighs> nothing. You got nothing? I got nothing. Nate's all right. own. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to bother him. Jenna, Jenna, you've been around forever. I don't know how you're only in this age group, but how does that help you going into today? Um, to, like, know how the lights and having the cameras around you. So it doesn't even phase you anymore? No. All right, and how you been bowling lately? Um, pretty good. All right, you guys ready to go? They're ready. I'm ready. I'm you ready. ready. Yeah. Let's watch some bowling. <laughs> Nate Rubick is throwing the first ball on lane 38. Trevor will follow him up on 37. Nate in the blue, Trevor in the purple. Good luck, Nate and Trevor. There's color shame. There was no shame in that. I was simply stating facts. Facts that I have not gotten correct is Nate's last name. For several years, I have been calling him Rubichik. And today, I believe I've corrected it for the first time. When I went over to brag to him that I had it figured out, I got it wrong again. <laughs> I said, oh, Nate Rubik's. Got it. And he's like, no, it's Rubik. He had to write down on his information sheet in parentheses, like the cube. I encourage Nate to call me Rope Tyler for the rest of my life. Both of our gentlemen looking to get settled in up there. Looking for big outs. Nate. On the head pin, the bounces around. He'll get seven. Trevor on the head pin and a nice nine. The gentlemen are starting this match because Trevor Kennison and Sammy Smith won the coin toss and made the choice. Actually, they lost the coin toss, but the other team, Nate and Jenna, chose to start on 38, so they want the chance for last ball on 37 in case they get in another tight one. Oh, that's a Bill Belichick. Mm. Defer. Defer. Always defer. Nate Rubick, nicknamed Nate Dog. Allegedly. He writes Alleged. it. <laughs> Nate Dog. Looking for the regulators to mount up down on the lanes. Trevor, meanwhile. Wow. What a reference. Trevor nicknamed T. Like T. Kennison. From your hometown, I believe. Chicopee. Yeah, close enough. Whatever. I know. Oh, a nice bit by just Nate. all blends into one yeah. county for you guys out here. Yeah, once I get fine. past Worcester, it's Connecticut to <laughs> me. Really. Nate looking for the 10. Go. And we saw after Nate's first ball him make a little gesture that he wanted to slow himself down. It's tough when you go back up there on the lanes with the lights. And he's doing a good job settling in. Trevor, meanwhile, with nine, so 18 to 17 in favor of Trevor Kennison to start. It's got quite the, uh, quite the ball. Mm. It really fires him He does, yeah, and off the, the right foot, too. Rare Ooh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Right handed bowler throwing it off the right foot, and it's working for him. 
Nate with a high triple of 389. As he homes in on that 400 total. Oh, straight through for the half Worcester. Trevor, meanwhile, with a big high single of 125. And that is the bowling accomplishment he is proudest of. So Nate slowing things down, taking his time, looking to pick up the half Worcester. On the head pin, gives it a great try. On the outside, the place you want it leaves just the five pin. Helicopter in it. It did. Trevor on the head pin, also trying to convert. Leaves just the seven. So both gentlemen looking for their first marks of the match. Nate Rubik tossed a 294 to qualify for the show. He's just off there with the nine. He came five pins shy of Billy Lewis, our number one seed, who you will meet next week on the program. Trevor with 10 brings him to 28. Nate with 26. Two pin difference in favor of Trevor Kennison. And Trevor, for the first year ever on Candlepin New Generation, we asked the contestants for their favorite books. And Trevor wins. And Trevor put Anne Frank's diary down. So a potential aspiring historian in Trevor Kennison. How many people even gave answers? A lot of I don't knows in the favorite book category, but I thought as a teacher I was doing a bad job educating our Nathan's youth, nation's youth only asking for favorite TV shows and movies. Nine and a wiggle for Kennison. He'll try to pick it up. He's got a piece of wood that might help, might hurt. It's going to be interesting. That's why we watch. Nate looking to convert the four horsemen and one and back, and he does. Nice spare for Rubik. Oh, and he gets robbed. Trevor, the wood does not treat him kindly. He put it in a good spot. He wanted the ball to hit that wood and bounce into the pin. Just veered a little left. Thank you. And a 10 for Trevor. Brings him up to 38. Nate down two, but with a chance to take the lead with his first ball. Nate, an Attleboro native, where he attends their high school. He's got his favorite food listed as burgers with bacon. Classic. It's a great... No burger is, is worse by putting bacon on it. Oh, never. Trevor's favorite food is pasta, which also benefits from bacon. Nate, backdoor hammer, a big fist bump, and he goes into the half at 56 and two balls. It's almost like Nate knew they were all going to fall off the head then. That last. Yeah. I always showed shame when I threw backdoor strikes. Nope, not here. Nate earned it. Not in new gen. That's right. Take what you are given, especially in a one-string showdown. Trevor in the pocket, a tough break, and he'll look for the out. Trevor's got his favorite pro bowler listed as Norm Duke. I saw that. That's a 10-pin bowler, right? That is a 10-pin bowler. Oh, man. A great 10-pin bowler. Man, so Candlepin's been off the air too long. Thank God Trevor's, we have us. Trevor's information sheet is a wild ride. 56 and two balls at the half for Nate Rubick. Trevor at 47 at the half. A nine-pin difference in favor of Rubick and Jenna Wart. On, Jenna. Jenna in the red. Sammy Smith in the black Woburn jersey. Jenna, as you mentioned, has been on the show plenty before. Sammy making her first season debut. The bet first the run. Jenna, they're bouncing around, doesn't catch them all. Sammy, meanwhile, just threw the front one, and they will look for outs. Nice out for Jenna. She gets the nine. And Sammy's in the gutter. She'll take seven. Because those two won't count. And so Sammy Squirrel Smith, she's got her favorite movie listed as Forrest Gump. It's a good one, so it's a classic. Run, Sammy. <laughs> Run, Sammy. Jenna only really gave us her favorite song of Wagon Wheel by Darius Rucker. Never heard of it. You never heard of it? Is that a popular song? Yeah, it's a popular Is song. Is it out like right now? No. Oh. It's, it's infamous? It's like an historically great song? No, it's probably like, well, 
Rucker did it like four years ago. Oh, I've never heard of Darius Rucker. Hootie. Uh, you're saying words that make have no meaning to me right now. Jenna nearly picks up the spare. I don't get it. Sammy, a nice bit as well. Her favorite song is Cruise by Florida Georgia Line. You know that one? I am familiar with them, though I could not pick their song out of the lineup. Figures. 10 for Jenna. She's at 19 through 2. Sammy with the eight. That brings her to 15. Now, I may not know Darius Rucker, but I do know Sammy Smith's uncle, pro bowler Joe Smith. So, does that say something about me? It says a lot about you. <laughs> Again, this is the only place where that's okay. Jenna Ward off the head pin, but with a makeable spare leave, especially as the 10 pin drops. The Ward Rubik combination getting a lot of action off the head pin. Joe Smith here? I don't know, I'm kind of in his zone. It's, it's hard to catch everyone that comes in. Uh, Joe Smith in the house. Jenna looking to pick up the spare. She's got that nice wood tight in back, so if she's on the head pin, she should carry it. Oh. I stand corrected. No luck for Jenna. So both contestants looking for big outs. This may be a good opportunity, Brian, to go to our Franklin TV Crew Member of the Week Ooh. as we celebrate the fine folks from Franklin TV who helped make this show possible. This week's Crew Member is Sophie, who has been with us since our inception here at the show. I believe four seasons of Sophie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now at the College of Mass Art, she informed us that she is a cave-dwelling cryptic. So We're Jenna down. Ward throwing the ball here in the fourth box. She's at 29, Sammy Smith at 24. Jenna on the head pin, buries it. But a very difficult spare leave, though. She's getting some late action here. Can I tell you what my biggest fear is? Please, I would love to hear your biggest fear. Not one of them. Not one of them. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a standout, got it. Whenever, whenever a lane gets fixed, I'm always afraid to throw the first ball because I think the guy's just going to fall down from the top. Definitely, a million the percent. And I'm just going to hit him with the ball. As if they're just back there like monkey barring. Yeah, yeah it's like waiting. Yeah. Another irrational fear, but I have many of those. Great attempt by Jenna. She's looking at the 10. And a makeable spare leave here for Sammy. All that wooden back ties it up pretty nicely. She'll need the head pin. She's on it. And she shot. picks it up. Great shot by Sammy Smith. The first mark of the match for the Trevor Sammy team. Nice 10 by Ward. That brings her up to 39. Sammy Smith, 34 and a ball. Let's take another look. Sweet shot at the end, picking up the seven last. So one box remains for our lady contestants. Remember, Nate Rubick is sitting on a strike still. Two more of those, and he will earn the $500 Woburn Bulladrome sponsored triple strike jackpot. Done it for three years, never been hit. I think we did it the year after the kid threw the triple yep. strike. Yeah. Yep. So that was a good call on our part. Good call on us. We're not making mistakes like Jeopardy and that guy who's won 80 in a row by Just now. Destroying it. With his $10 million. Jeopardy's about to lose their host and their bankroll. Oh, yeah. There's no way they can remain solvent. Nice attempt by Sammy, just off the head pin. Jenna just off, she'll take the nine. Sammy with nine. Brian, do you remember Sammy's fill there? Uh... Sammy, what was your fill? What was your first ball? Seven. Should we trust Sammy, Brian? Nope. Sammy said seven. We've got it on tape, Sammy, so if you're lying, I'm kidding. Okay, so gentlemen taking the lane. Trevor is up. Sammy and Trevor have 97 combined. Nate and Jenna have 104 combined. And Nate is, of course, on a strike. I will give you the difference once he fills the strike because I don't want to do math twice. All you folks at home, you've got the luxury of seeing those beautiful graphics conjured by Chris. Those beautiful score sheets. What a guy. I'm just trying to do the math. I'm trying to figure out how you got what you got. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to do it. I'm not going to try. It's only going to lead to it. issues. Because yeah, if we've got different I'm results, gonna it. it's not going to matter. Yep. And yeah. Nope. I'm not going to look at that anymore. So Nate buried that head then. 
Gonna try to convert the split. What a shot by Rubik! That's three in a row for the Boomer native. He's feeling hot at home. Tough seven for Trevor. And so Nate is up to 76 and a ball in the sixth. And they are in the lead. They are. They are. By a, by a number. Double digit lead for Rubik and Wart. Trevor's gonna look to get on the board with a mark here. No stranger to tight matches. We saw him a couple weeks ago make some clutch shots down the stretch. He's gonna look to tap into that here. Trevor a little off the head pin, but a makeable spare leave. Rubik, meanwhile, has three marks in a row and looking for four. Buries the head pin. He's feeling good. Give him a corner. A lot of body language from Rubik. You can tell he is in the zone. Trevor just off. So Rubik with the 5-7. He's got some wood on the right that's definitely tempting. Might come a little in front. Not sure. We'll see what he decides to go with. I'm Rubik. I'm playing the wood. He goes that way and picks it up beautifully. Great shot by Rubik. Four marks in a row, Brian. That's two squared. And I was going to try to get cubed involved in that, but I couldn't do it with the whole Rubik cube thing. No dice. No dice. But 94 and a ball for Rubik. He's in the seventh. Kennison at 63. Rubik on a hot streak. Trevor Kennison, meanwhile, looking to channel Norm Duke and drop some hammers up there. On the head pin, oh, solid it. nine, leaving the 10 pin. All it takes is one mark to get things going. Things can change in a hurry. Rubik, another buried hit. Another tough leave, but another one rich with opportunities here. A lot of wood up there. Trevor nice picks nine. up the spare. Nice shot by Kennison, plays the wood. Now, if I'm Rubik, you're just blasting that wood on the right and hoping it bounces over. And the it's walls have been brain. hot earlier, so... Could work. Catch it! Oh, it looked oh, like he did everything right. The wood connected with that other wood in the gutter, but it just didn't carry the seven. The wood flew over. Yeah, I thought he had it. Brilliant try. Rubik goes right at that seven pin. He is at 112 through eight. Kennison at 73 and a ball. So now if you're Trevor, you want to put another mark up there, get a big fill, start chipping away. Get Sammy back in a striking distance. The difference in the match in the high 30s right now. Trevor, a tough half Worcester. No luck for Kennison. Nate. That ball is well suited here for Woburn Bullet Drum at the home house. Unreal. Getting a lot of action. Great bit by Rubik. Now Trevor looking for the out. It's a nice seven. Nothing to sneeze out when you're staring at a half Worcester. Nate, meanwhile, with the nine. So one box remains for our gentleman. Nate sitting at 121 in the ninth. Trevor at 82. I'll maybe finish up this big game. Can we just talk about his hidden talents? That's something really cool about him. Please do. Uh, remembering things from his childhood. Nate's really good at remembering things from his childhood. You know, I think that's one of my talents. Do you remember your childhood? Very vividly. I blocked most of it out. Yeah. Nate! I feel like this is going to be a string he remembers. Another tough spare leave, but he's been great at giving these chances. Trevor, also with a difficult one, gives it a great ride. Hits the object pin. He will look for the out. Nate, meanwhile, no wood this time. Just going to try to cut the three into the seven. Great bid. And so he earns himself a 130 game. Nate with eight for the 90. No shame in Trevor Kennison's string. He did beat his average. Rubik beat it too with a 131 monster single for Nate Rubik. And he did it with only four marks. That is great fills. Great right fills, middle. great pinning. Left only four pins in the string. And so he hands his partner, Jenna Ward, a 39 pin lead. And so Sammy Smith is gonna look to channel Uncle Joe, who is in the crowd, and try to chip into this. So she's all over the head pin. Tough spare leave. Oh, Jenna, meanwhile, buries 
takes it, leaves the six. Sammy Smith has dance, golf, and fishing listed as additional activities that she participates in. I hate, lot. I hate fishing. You hate fishing? Nah, just... It's boring. I found it boring as a kid, and then the first time I went fishing, as Jenna looks to pick it up. Great spare pickup by Jenna. Not an easy spare either. She had to play it high. First time I went fishing, yeah. my dad said the, uh, the fish don't bite grub. And the first fish we caught was a pickerel, which you will know as the only fish with teeth. And so that started seven years of me not trusting my father and a bloody finger. Yeah. And the last time I went fishing. I don't know what happened. Jenna Ward with 58 and a ball in the six as she tries to catch up to her partner. Sammy, meanwhile, with 59 in the same box. Another head pin hit for Smith. Oh, I know it. And she wants that wood to sneak out of there. It does, so she's got a nice, clear line of sight on those two pins. Jenna, meanwhile, filling the spare with three. Brings her up to 61. My brother was good at fishing, too, and that was really annoying Nobody's as a kid. Nobody's good at fishing. No, apparently he was. All the stories I heard, oh, Corey caught this. It's a whole thing. He hit more home runs than me, too, but I'm not bitter about it. Sammy looking for the out. She will get eight. And six for Jenna brings her up to 67. Both are ladies at 67 through seven. Jenna likes camping. That's another rough one. Camping? Nah, depends how you camp. Yeah, I don't, I don't camp hardcore, definitely. And I certainly wouldn't be listening to Darius Rucker while I did it. Oh, they go one. They go hand in hand, so. Yeah. I'm not a big tent guy. Yeah, tents are hard. That's three straight head pin hits for Sammy. Truly channeling Joe Smith. She'll look to pick it up. Jenna bulls out of stars and strikes lanes. There's a pick up for Sammy. Nice spare there. Not quite how you draw it up, but taking advantage of those live sidewalls here at Woburn. Jenna answers with a spare. These ladies in lockstep. Jenna's hometown is Norway, so she had to fly over the Atlantic to get here. Oh, wow. That's a hike. Nah, man. I thought those kids from Maine were coming flight. a long way. We've got some kids later on in the day that drove six hours to be a part of this. From Presque Isle. Yeah. Brian Refusa. Can't compare May to 4th. Norway. We've got to be there in six hours. I'd say, you know what? I'm not going to make it. I don't know what you're talking about. May 4th. This show's airing in September. Head pin hit for Ward. Drops eight, but a brutal spare leave and a tough half Worcester for Sammy. Gives it a try, though. Oh, oh, oh great effort. Jenna has her nickname listed as J-Bug. That hasn't changed in like the 15 years that she's been on the show. Sammy with the nine. Gets her to 88 in the ninth frame. Jenna Ward with nine as well, brings her to 94. So one box left in this matchup. Both of our ladies homing in near 100. Nate Rubick and Jenna Ward are going to be the victors in this match. They will face the winner of next week's showdown, in which we will meet our number one seeds for the first time. That is Billy Lewis and Tasha Hussey. That should be a great matchup. Sammy Smith looking to end on a high note. She's had a strong performance in her Candlepin New Generation debut. Two strong strings, both over her average. Repping the hometown well. Repping the hometown well, couldn't agree more. Sammy at 14 with a clear, bright future ahead of her in the Candlepin world. I almost said home house and that, like, that just doesn't sound right. Yeah, no. eh, I think it's yeah. So 95 finish for Sammy Smith. And a 103 for Jenna Ward. So Nate Rubick and Jenna Ward take the match with a monster combined score of 234. We'll talk to them right now. Huge score from our 12 team to 12 to 14 contestants. We'll start with you, Jenna. Jenna, you had the advantage of bowling second and watching Nate drop a huge score. Did that take the pressure off any? A little bit. Still threw a big score yourself, breaking 100. What's going through your head up on the lanes? Um, well, well, I mean, when you hit the head pin, you don't get very good breaks, so. 
Well, sometimes you don't want all the breaks in one match when you're in good shape. You try to save them for the championship round, right? Yes. So you have to watch one more match, and then it's going to be a championship showdown. That's a place where you've got some experience. What's it like going into a championship match? Um, to just keep your head in the game. Cool. Well, she's keeping her head in the game. Nate kept his head in the game. What a big score, 131. Yeah, Nate, huge score, four marks in a row. Um, once you're through the first one, how'd you keep the momentum rolling? Honestly, I do not know. You just, you just kept throwing the ball and good stuff was happening? Yes. Now, the guys, for a lot of times, they bowl second. Bowling first today, how did that change both your mental aspect and like your game plan? I don't know. It's just that uh, keep the ball on the head pin and... Not leaving as many pins. Did you, was there a little, you know, we talked to Jenna about how she didn't have any pressure because you threw such a big score. Was there less pressure bowling first that you just go out there and throw a massive score and not have to worry about what the lead is? Just bowling out there and bowl a huge score. Yeah. Exactly. Well, congratulations. So it's great bowling by our contestants. These two are going to our finals, and we got to find two kids to face them. So make sure you join us next week for another 12 to 14 semifinal match. We're here at Woburn Bulladrome. We're working with the great folks at Franklin TV. He's Brian Rowe. I'm Rob Taylor. Thanks for watching Candlepin New Generation. Candlepin New Generation encourages kids to be active and enjoy candlepin bowling. Candlepin New Generation is made possible by Academy Lanes, New England's largest candlepin center. Visit academylanes.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.